What's up, Summoners? King Blair here. Today, we're going to be talking about the current banner hero, Yulha, and whether or not you should pull for her. So, as always, I'll break the video up into sections so you can skip around and go to the section you want to listen to. But first, we're going to be talking about the current bookmark situation, the banners that just happened, the banners that are likely to come within the next month, two, three months, right? So you get an idea on what you may want to save for if you want to save. Then we'll actually do a summary on the unit, what she does, and then we'll actually go more into detail into her kit and actually really start seeing uh, what she's able to do. So if you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and just go server, link down in the description. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So first, where are we right now with bookmarks, right? Very, very recently, we've had a lot of reruns, right? Particularly the Amelia and Ram coming back, which if you're a new player and you didn't have those, I imagine you were able to pull for them, hopefully, especially Amelia, because she's an incredibly strong unit and she's a hero you absolutely should try to pull for them. So you may be a little bit low on bookmarks if you're a new player that didn't have them. Four players that have been playing around for a while. Honestly, we've been able to save up a lot, right? Taiyu wasn't like this super insane hero. Like he had his uses, but it was a hero that you could honestly probably skip. And if you already had the collab heroes, you've been able to save up. I've actually finally been able to start restocking again on my bookmarks, right? So I finally have more resources than I used to have, right? Which feels great. So now you may have a little bit more. So what's coming, right? What's coming next? What should you be watching out for? Well, there's a very good chance that they're going to rerun Rimuru and Milum sometime within the next three months. Why? Because they have yet to not rerun a collab uh, hero, right? As far as like they always rerun the collabs. So I would be very shocked if they didn't rerun the Rimuru uh, Milum. And they came out about two months after the Amelia and Rem. So there's a very, very good chance that they are going to be coming. The thing is that summer's around the corner, although Smogate has a very different definition of what they think is summer. I think last time the summer units came like in September, right? And the and the Rimuru came out in August, right? So it was, it was kind of crazy, like the, the timeline that they have for, for those reruns. But as far as the summer units are concerned, uh, there was Summer Iseria, there's Summer Seaside Bologna, right? Which are both really, really good heroes in their own right. And of course, a lot of Yuffie, although she's not really that important. And there's a very good chance that we're going to be getting Summer Alexa. If you guys remember way back when in the Awaken patch a long time ago, they mentioned that there was a very good chance that we would be getting Summer Alexa, right? So, And she looked like she's going to be a new hero because she got a new... Uh, animation right so most likely that is going to be a hero that is a hero that they teased kind of how they teased aria way before so there's a very good chance we'll get summer alexa so that may be something you want to make consider but now that brings us to yuha and whether or not to pull for her so as far as to summarize yuha she very much reminds me of an earth crawl and i honestly think she's not a bad unit to potentially pick up because she has a lot of potential for the future as well as for pve as a whole because she's so similar to crawl in a lot of aspects where she does she's a little bit more selfish she doesn't have a team-wide buff like crawl gets defense buff she's a little bit more selfish in what she does but they both at the end of the day are heroes that have s1s that provoke and have an S3s that do damage based on missing health, right? They're very similar in how they function, and Crow is still one of the, the staple heroes. I very much think that she's going to be a really good hero for Arena and Guilders for a very long time. Now, for RTA, she may not be as strong, although she could have potential, but for Guilders and Arena, she's going to be almost a staple that you can definitely use. Why? Because she's Earth, and surprisingly, you may think Earth should counter Hua, but in Arena and Guild Wars, Earth is actually really good, and Earth Knight is very, very amazing, especially with her high base HP stat line. The reason for that, we kind of talked about it in a video in the past, uh, but it's basically how AI is a lot easier to, to bait, right? And a, one of the biggest ways that you beat hard Guild Wars defenses and arena defenses is by putting elemental bait. Because if you put just her, Hua is going to go on her 10 out of 10 times, and there are several ways you can make sure she doesn't die. And you can guarantee that she gets her push up and her turn and is able to actually do her job as a Guild Wars unit and take out another unit, right? If you're in Guild Wars and you can make a 2v3 situation and make sure that your unit is not dying to Huam, you're probably going to win that fight, right? So let's, let's, let's just actually look at the kit to get a better idea. But I think she's actually going to be a really strong unit. I would highly suggest you consider potentially picking her up, especially if you don't have a crawl, right? If you need bait and just if you struggle against Huam. If you're someone that really struggles against Huam, She's actually pretty solid at what she does, right? Is she going to be this unit that's going to carry you everywhere? Like, is she a 100% stable unit? No, but she's a very strong, solid unit. And again, you do have to realize that there's a good chance we're going to get reruns very soon, but it should be in some time, and hopefully you'll be able to save up. If you've been playing for a long time, 
I definitely would recommend it. If you're a newer player, you may want to consider the potential future collabs. But again, she looks like a very good pickup, right? Very well balanced. I don't think she, I think it's a very nice unit overall. I'm very happy that I pulled for her. Uh, and I'm going to finally be able to push Hua out and not have to worry about her in all the different teams that people use for Hua. But let's actually look at her stat line. She actually shares the same stat line as Swan Cecilia, uh, which she is, if you all have fought Swan Fawn Cecilia's, you guys know this unit can get very tanky. Fawn Cecilia very easily reaches 30,000 uh, 30, health plus, right? This unit can also reach at 30,000 plus uh, health th threshold while still maintaining decent speed, right? That's the big part. It is not uncommon to actually be able to do that, right? So, okay, uh, it's her self imprint, it's also HP, right? So it's very similar to Fawn Cecilia. You can actually get her pretty high HP with very decent speed, right? That's great, right? That means she's gonna be able to actually survive in a lot of situations, right? So that's the first part. She's also Earth, which matters because it's also a way that you're able to bait Hua in Arena and Guild Wars defense, right? So now let's actually look at the skills and you can get a better idea. Also, I really like her in-game animation. I'm not a big fan actually of her like um of her art, but I really like her in-game model. I don't know if that's just me. I really like the in-game model. I'm not the, the biggest fan of the of the art. There's some heroes that are like that. Like Arya is one of the ones I don't like the I don't like the art, but I love the 3D model on on the on the animations. But okay, I'm getting out, I'm getting I'm getting sidetracked. But let's actually look at the kit. So first, the S1, very basic, but again, it's just it's very solid, right? It's very similar to Cross. I believe Cross scales off of defense, her scales off of HP, right? So it's very similar to Fallen Cecilia's. It's, it's Fallen Cecilia's S1, basically. This is basically Fallen Cecilia's S1, where you have a hundred percent to get redirected. Provoke. So it's not regular provoke, it's redirected. So it's basically Fallen Cecilia, but with redirected provoke, right? For most situations, she will be your highest HP. Most likely, she's going to be the one. The only situation where this matters is if she dies. Because with Fallen Cecilia, there's a lot of times you provoke a unit and they can poke, po pop Fallen Cecilia and the provoke goes away because the unit that's being provoked goes away. With redirected provoke, the only reason it's technically better than Fawn Cecilia's, even though it functions as a provoke, is if she does end up getting popped, you still have that unit provoked, right? So that part, that's the very only situation where that's like, okay, redirected provoke is technically better than a provoke if it's a highest uh, health unit actually applying it. The other situation, again, it's like if for some reason some weird injury stuff happens, but again, not a bad uh, S1. Now is the S2, which is quite long, but it's also quite... Quite interesting, right? So when she suffers a single attack, she reflects 30% of the damage reflected, and the damage reflected cannot uh, be higher than the caster's max health, right? Uh, the reflected and cannot be higher than the caster's max health, right? That makes sense, right? But she's gonna have a lot of health, right? Most likely you're hitting 30,000, so that threshold will almost never likely happen. Uh, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be very strange if that actually does reach that point, but again, there you go. It's a nice little reflect from the S uh, when they hit her with a single target attack. So start thinking of the synergies, right? You can pair this up with Stena, right? You can pair it up with uh, Guiding Light Landy, right? If they tr are trying to reach those heroes, you can very hard punish a heavy single target uh, enemy, right? But the part that actually makes it really unique is when she's going to drop to low health to 30% or less, she self cancels and gets murderous intent, right? It's every five turns. You're not going to be getting it that often. It's probably, it's basically almost a once per fight kind of situation. But she's, uh, but although it could potentially happen more because she does actually have ways to heal. But she gets a barrier for three turns and gets a combat readiness push of 30%, right? So why is this good and why does it matter? So when you think of Krav, right? Krav is, is very selfless, right? He gives defense buff. He's trying to be protective, right? He's, he's trying to be there. But when he drops slow... He doesn't get a guaranteed S3, right? Very often you see Craw getting provoked. You see Craw getting um, popped, right? Or you just, he's not fast enough to actually cut and be able to use his S3. Well, this actually lets her be able to potentially cut because she's self-cleansing, so you can't control her easily. And then so you're pushing up 30%. That's a pretty good cut. And on top of that, she's getting a barrier. So it's harder to actually kill her. When Craw gets below 30%, sometimes you just S1 him and kill him. Well, it's not as easy to do that on her because she's getting a thick, nice little barrier that she's going to be able to use, right? So she's able to actually get to her S3. So now, what's the S3? Essentially, it's cross S3 that ignores damage sharing, right? It's, it's, it's literally cross S3, except it ignores damage sharing, which is pretty big, 
because of Pyro, right? And we'll talk about this in a second. It's such a good Guild Wars unit. Uh, but again, basically causes three. It does have lower scaling than Craw. So don't expect it to do exactly Craw damage, but it's still going to be a pretty good amount of damage, especially because you're ignoring damage here. And that's going to matter a lot for Guild Wars, right? So again, it's Cross S3. You have missing health. The lower health you are, you do more damage, right? And she can actually survive because she gets the barrier. So let me break down a scenario for you, right? Para Hua defense. This defense is like literally everywhere, right? In Guild Wars. If you haven't seen it, I'm shocked if you haven't, but it's a very common defense, right? So what ends up happening when she's on the board is Para can do whatever she wants. She does her S2, does her S3, right? Hua gets attack buff and gets to go in an S3, right? You have a hero that has 31k HP. Yes, she's Earth, but it's very unlikely that she will get one shot if you have her 30k HP. Even, and if you're worried that she will die, you can just give her Proof of Valor, right? If you're really worried about her dying to a Hua, slap on Proof of Valor, you'll live at 28k HP, right? It's very, very unlikely that a Hua is going to kill a 28k HP Proof of Valor unit. If they do, you just got gear gap. Like that is very rare situation to happen. So for most intents and purposes, you should be surviving that, right? If you have a proof, of, especially if you have proof of valor, right? If you're worried about living. So most likely what you're going to be looking at is giving her HP sets, right? Getting her to be like pretty bulky. She only really needs like 180 max speed because she's going to get the 30% cut. But right, let's, just, let's just keep breaking down the scenario. Hua comes in, she has threes, right? Hua comes in, does her S3. Yulha will live with a little, like, not the highest health, right, below 30%, she'll get that barrier, she'll get the CR push, and then she gets to come in with an S3 that does not, that does damage based on her lost, lost health, right? And if you kill, she full heals. So now think of the Pera Hua combo, right? Now let's say the last unit is, I don't know, um... Let's just say a Ravi, because that's very common. You're not going to be killing a Ravi, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, you, you probably don't have enough damage to kill a Ravi. Oh, you'll be pretty close. But again, you still have that barrier. You're still surviving, right? You're doing basically almost one-shotting, and you're baiting Qua. And you're ignoring damage-sharing effects, right? And you will kill some Belions, right? There are some Belions you will probably maybe kill, right? So it's, very, it's a very, very, very solid s3 type skill right because you're ignoring that that uh Pera's damage mitigation you could even potentially throw this on hua even though you're going to potentially miss even if you miss right the adamant you're dodging the adamant shield you're dodging the damage sharing you're gonna pretty much get the hua to almost zero hp right and if you hit you're probably killing the hua Right? So that's that's really, really, really solid, right? It just makes her a very, very strong candidate. And again, Hua is also very popular in Arena. So overall, her kid is essentially an Earth Crawl. And if we can just go by history, Crawl has been around for a very long time and has just been very good. Now, the last option, the last thing I want to talk about is going to be for RTA. RTA right now is quite aggressive in the higher ranks. Uh, it's it's a lot of 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 basically DN and a lot of like very aggressive drafts uh, and she's a very supportive unit if you've seen Crow and RTA Crow and RTA does get played just not that often but I could see her kind of functioning as an earth crawl with Aureus right I could definitely see her being a good Aureus holder because she can survive right she can survive and get that S3 and she can heal off of it right so she's essentially a crawl that won't die when he has threes so people are counting her out of RTA I think she has potential I think she could she could be decent in the future. I think with an Aureus build, tanky, just surviving, she could definitely do some work in uh, RTA as well. And I probably will be building her for RTA because the only thing you really need to do between her RTA build and her Guild Wars slash Arena build is change the artifact. Where in Arena and Guild Wars, you probably want Proof of Valor, so you definitely live against the Hua. In RTA, you want Aureus because they're not going to be hitting you because they're going to be taking damage if they do a single target attack, right? And that's why it's so good. You can literally kill Hua afterwards, even though you're Earth, because you're doing damage based on missing health. The Hua is doing damage on herself and you're ignoring the Paris damage sharing. That's just all so good. Oh man, she's, she's gonna be a really, really great Guild Wars and Arena unit. But that is going to be all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you guys uh, are able to actually pull for her if you want her. I think she's going to be a pretty solid unit. Uh, and I definitely think she has she has the potential to be like 
pretty good, right? So I definitely don't think it's a bad pickup. So if you like the design, absolutely pull for her. If you're struggling in Hua and Guild Wars, definitely a good candidate to pick up. Definitely builds you can try to make sure she lives the Hua and is able to retaliate, right? There's a lot, there's a lot of testing just to be still be done, but it's pretty good, right? Overall, she's she's looks very very solid unit. Um, that I definitely see having some impact. Uh, is she a must pull? That's to be determined. Usually you can't tell that from the first two weeks, unfortunately. Unless, except with Hua, you kind of knew Hua was broken. I think she's going to be a very solid staple unit in Guild Wars and Arena, though, just because she's just a good Earth tank. But that is going to be all I have for you guys today, and I will see you next time. Peace.